Hey everybody, Larissa here from Beekeeping Made Simple and um, happy February. <laughs> uh, this live video is about buying bees, transporting bees, and all that fun stuff that goes into um, the uh, late winter preparations for beekeeping. Um, it's been a while. Uh, <laughs> Having a second child caught up with me, uh, to say the least. So, um, all right. Um, so what this video is about specifically is packages versus, versus nukes. When I recommend one versus the other, transporting them, because I haven't bought a, a, a package or a nuke in a very long time, but I do sell them. And I've seen people come totally unprepared. Uh, I don't sell packages. I just sell nukes. And so I want to give you some tips on driving with bees in your car, you know, uh, or truck, whatever you have, you can put both, you can, you don't need a truck to transport um, a package of bees or a nuke. Um, and then installing and all the things that go into buying bees. So um, first of all, when you go to buy bees, it's usually done around now or January. Uh, very few apiaries will listen to you if you try to buy bees before January. Um, but January, February is when um, you're going to put in your quest for bees. And um, so the first thing they're going to probably ask you if you're given the option is a nuke versus a package. A package is a wire cage and it has roughly three to five pounds of bees in it it's like about five thousand bees one queen in a cage and <laughs> very loud noise behind me and a can with some sugar syrup in there so they have something to eat and they're not starving to death your other option is a nuke which is short for nucleus hive and that looks like a beehive it's a box that holds a full deep frames um except it doesn't hold 10 frames or eight frames like a, a full-size beehive would it holds four um i've heard of some people selling uh nukes with just three frames i've heard of some people with five frames mine are four frames and a three frame nuke is i don't know a little on a small side if you ask me um but if say it's like springtime and warm and flowers are blooming, then that might be doable. So um, the nuke is what I recommend to beginners for because it's uh, easier. You know, it's more expensive, but the queen is already laying. She's walking around. She's not in a cage. You have baby bees already and all the cycles, you know, the the eggs, the larvae, the kept brood, you have honey, you have pollen. Um, they get up and running right away. Uh, whereas the nuke, I, the package of bees, you have to release your queen out of a cage and um, they have nothing. They have to start building comb. The queen has to first um, be released from her cage before she can start walking around and then it might be a few days before she starts laying eggs and so um the nuke is better for beginners um uh, your bees will be up and running a lot faster so it's also good for people that live in a place with a very short summer and you want your bees to get going a little bit sooner um if you're a beginner, you also don't have drawn out comb you can give them. So it's always great to have that nuke because it already has drawn out comb on there. Um, and, you know, has it's really easy to install. It's a little kind of foolproof. The package of bees is uh, a benefit for people that already have beehives because you probably already have um drawn out comb you can give them from over the winter you, you hopefully already have bees that are that are surviving the winter so um if you need to share brood at some point in the springtime you can if that hive is struggling to get going um a package of bees is usually like half the price sometimes even less so it's a much more affordable way to go um 
And if you already have an apiary and you're looking to just uh, build on that and expand, then the package is the way to go. I mean, to buy a nuke is kind of unnecessary and um, money spent that you don't really need to because you can already give them frames of honey, probably that you have sitting around um, from other hives. Uh, you don't really need to go buy that that full nuke. The nuke, um, part of the cost is that they're giving you this box with frames in it. So you're paying for them to, you're paying for the frames, you're paying for them to put these frames together. I sell my nukes in a cardboard wax box. So they cost me like $10 a piece. I let people keep them. Um, if people come to pick up the nuke with their equipment, with a box, with the frames, um, I'll waive that $10 fee and charge them $10 less so that, and, and we just put the frames and all the bees straight into their equipment. Um, and then I don't have to give them that nuke box. So that's the other kind of annoying thing with the nuke is that there is this extra bit of equipment that you have to deal with that you're either paying for and probably never using again because it's just like, you know, a, a small nuke box, or maybe not ever using again, but you, you don't need to use it often. Um, so it, it might be something extra that you're paying for that you don't really need. So, um, if you have questions, feel free to post them and I'll get to them as I can. But that's really the difference between the nuke and the package and when I recommend one versus the other. And of course, if you don't have the option, then just get what you can find. It's not that big of a deal. When I got started in Pennsylvania, um, I was living in Philly. And so the farm that I bought my package of bees from the one year, they just go down to Georgia or Tennessee they drive down, they drive back up overnight with a truck full of packages of bees. Um, so for a lot of people that are living in a place where it's still very, very cold out right now, my mom said it was 23 there <laughs> uh, this afternoon. Um, you're probably going to be buying a package and that package is probably coming from somewhere uh, in the southern states um it's it, they're not going to be local bees and that's probably going to be your only option and so that's what you're going to have to do <laughs> uh, but if given the option then um i do recommend the new for you beginners they will probably also ask you if you want a marked queen a marked queen is a queen that has a paint spot on her back um there are different colors that they put on their back depending on the year and so a uh, marked queen is two benefits that i know of there might be more but um one is that that color dot will help you keep track of your her age so that you don't have to do that in your notes um the other one is that it's a lot easier to spot her and uh, when she's walking around in the hive and um i mean i guess if if you're going to like catch a swarm or um, you're not sure if your hive be queened or not. Uh, you know, having a marked queen does help a, a little bit in that process. I mean, if you still have a queen walking around dot on her back, she didn't hatch that way. Um, but if you have a queen with no dot on her back, it is possible that um, your hive be queened when you were on vacation for three weeks and <laughs> you just uh, didn't know it. Um, so, most people get a marked queen. It is great to have for the first couple of years. Um, uh, if you, um, I don't recommend getting marked queens all the time. It's it's convenient, but if you ever split hives and let your hive requeen or your hive requeens for whatever reason, um, you want to try queen breeding. You need to know how to spot your queen without a spot on her back and so um it's really hard to do when you have a marked queen so if you get unmarked queens then you can practice your queen spotting skills a lot better and some queens they their paint spot on their back just rubs off uh, after a while and so um usually you'll start to see it gradually happen the paint spot will get smaller and smaller and smaller but um I mean, you might not have the option anyway. Your bees might choose that they want their queen unmarked, whether you like it or not. Um, 
Uh, uh, someone did mention that packages bees um, are good if you don't have Langstroth hives. And that is true if you need to, uh, if you have a hive that does not, that cannot take uh, Langstroth frames. Um, if you have a long Langstroth hive, you can still get a uh, nuke. But if you can't put Langstroth style frames into whatever hive style you have, then you are going to have to get a package of bees. Um, as far as cost is concerned, the cost definitely varies all over the country. When I was first getting started, I paid $80 for my package of bees. Uh, I've heard people say that they're now pay paying well over $100 for just a package of bees. I don't sell packages of bees. I just sell nukes and I charge uh, $175 for a nuke. Um, but that's really just going to vary wherever you are. Um, and, but it's good to know, you know, a general idea of, of what to expect. So um, the third thing that you might be asked, or you might not be given the option, is um, as Craig says 250 here in Ontario. Oh boy, that's an expensive hobby. Um, the other thing that people might be asked when buying bees after the new versus package, marked versus unmarked queen is um, the genetics of your bees. What, what kind of bees do you want? You want Italian, German, uh, Russian, Carnelian? As far as I'm aware, those are usually the options. I wasn't given an option when I uh, bought my bees. I bought bees from two different places in Pennsylvania. Here, I don't give people the option <laughs> because I do not breed my bees for genetics. Um, for like whether they're Italian versus German, I am just breeding so that they are um, deal with varroa mites as best as possible. Uh, here, varroa mites uh, are you know really bad. It's we have no frost, so um, it, the insect population is insanely high. Uh, so we have a lot of varroa mites and a lot of small hive beetle. Um, so I'm, I'm breeding for the bees that deal with varroa mites the best. Um, so in my experience, a lot of these farms, even though they ask you what kind of bees you want, their bees aren't just Italian or just Russian. I mean, it, they're, they're going to be combination. The queen goes out and she mates with well over 20 males and they're going to be a variety of genetics um there are queen breeders that artificially inseminate their queens but a lot of apiaries don't do that and so i don't really know if it's worth the time to to worry about what kind of genetics you want um but i will say that um the italian bees uh in my hives, I see bees that are yellow with black stripes. I see black ones with uh, tan stripes. I mean, it's a variety of genetics in my hive. But um, in general, the Russian bees were brought over here to help deal with varroa mites better. And uh, overall, they have been known to be better at dealing at the varroa mite resistance. Um, I mean, everyone knows about the African bees that were brought over here to make Africanized bees, and that did not go incredibly well. Uh, so I don't recommend looking into getting bees with uh, Africanized genetics. But um, the Italian bees uh, can be a little bit more docile, um, or so they say. I worked for honey operations, but also worked... Um, for a honey company that partnered closely with one of the biggest queen breeders in the world and their bees were all over like they were all different genetics so um i personally cannot say that i've worked with like bees that were just italian and just german and that i found a huge difference between the two because all i found was that people were just breeding bees and nobody was really paying close attention to the genetics so 
you can, if I was to pick one, no matter where in the country I was, I would go for ones that dealt with Barola the best and choose a Russian option. But um, I just really don't understand why people were even really asking the question. <laughs> It, it seems like un unnecessary uh, to think that people, to give people the the idea that they even really have much of an option. I think you just kind of get what you get. Um, more so when it comes to genetics, I mean, genetics is important in beekeeping, but uh, what I found is that it's up to the beekeeper to build their own genetic pool in their apiary. So when you are buying your bees, your first year, you might choose this one apiary that is near your house or other beekeepers you know go to. But the next time you go to purchase bees, I would go to another apiary. Um, and I would, I strongly recommend trying to do some swarm catching uh, or doing a cutout once in a while and um, letting your queens, your hives requeen when possible and just, just building up the, the genetic pool within your own apiary. And that also includes getting rid of the queens that are in hives that just struggle throughout your entire spring and summer and just haven't done much and you're just constantly feeding them bees and honey uh, and, and getting rid of the poor genetics um, because that is a big part of beekeeping is just uh, having the bees that will uh, deal with the stresses of life on their own as much as possible. Um, and you know, swarm trapping and cutouts, I mean, Cutouts is the hardest is I, I'm not a fan of it. <laughs> it's hard work, but there's lots of swarm traps you can buy. You can make your own swarm traps. I've put out swarm traps, but most of the time swarms just move into empty beekeeping equipment that I have stacked up on the side of a house or, or the barn. Um, it's not really something that you have to like, put too much thought into. Um, it's it, it can be as easy as just setting up some old beekeeping equipment and, um, and, and having a, a swarm move into your equipment. But either way, that is a really great way to just build up the genetic pool. Now, if you're a beginner and this is your first year, this isn't stuff you have to worry about. This is stuff that you want to work on your second, third, fourth year beekeeping as you um, get a handle on the beginners, the beginner stuff. Um, but uh, overall, with your beekeeping, I would say that you're, it's not so much about the, the gadgets and um, being too precise about things. It's a lot of beekeeping is your genetics because as a beekeeper, you know, it's kind of like as a parent, your goal isn't to just be there constantly to prevent anything bad from ever happening. A big part of it is making sure that you have these bees to be as strong as possible so that they can handle a lot of stresses on their own. And uh, varroa mites, for one, is um, some bees do a much better job of getting rid of those pupating bees that are covered in in mites and some hives don't. Um, some hives deal with the winter much better than others. Some hives just um, aren't good honey producers. They're not the best at foraging and some hives are. So you really just don't want to have to baby a hive and think that it's your job as the beekeeper to do everything right. It's your job to more so oversee all of these hives and to bring the best genetics to your apiary possible. Um, another big part of beekeeping is your location. And that's a lot of trial and error. It's uh, probably the hardest part of beekeeping for me uh, is, is location, finding places to put bees. Uh, now I have a lot more bees, so it's not a matter of finding like one good place to put all the bees, but finding multiple places uh, to put 
different yards. But um, even as a backyard beekeeper, your backyard might not be the best place for your bees. And it's a matter of just finding that out and finding an alternative that is just as good or maybe even better for you and your bees and probably whoever else is living in your home that doesn't want uh, 30,000 bees flying around the yard. And then a good portion of beekeeping is, is just pure old luck. Um, because, and I say that because you're going to buy these bees and almost always people usually buy two hives. And I mean, ideally like the best way to start is to buy five. Honestly, the more you have, the greater the chance that some are going to go right. <laughs> but at the very least, you're going to buy two hives, I hope. And one of them is going to be a dud. Like almost always, it's just the way it works. One of these hives is a dud. And we like to think that when we buy a hive, the beekeeper carefully selects the hive they're going to split from and they're pulling their best queen and the best brood and making this nuke or package perfect for you. But they're not. They're it's a business. They're working. There are days when they're tired or hungry, in a bad mood. They're just doing their job and they're putting together packages. They're just taking tons of bees and putting them in boxes. And so as a beekeeper, you're picking up this box and just hoping that these bees are strong, that this queen made it right, that this queen wasn't on a frame that um, was sh shaken around or held upside down. And, um, she was in a hive that had ample pollen and that they fed her well and that she has good genetics. And there's so many things that have to go right for you to have this strong colony that's going to thrive throughout the spring and summer and be able to handle the stresses of winter. So most of the time, one is really going to suffer and, and struggle throughout the spring. Maybe you start to get a little bit going in the summer, just in time for the blooms to start to disappear. And um, they might get robbed, at, robbed out and die before the end of fall. Or they might make it to winter and you might close them up and they won't be strong enough to survive the winter. And you'll kind of be like, yeah, I mean, I'm not that surprised. They hardly made it through summertime. Um, so, uh, that's why you just, you want to start with at least two hives and you want to be prepared for the fact that you might get one that is a, not a viable hive. It, it might just be a weak colony and there's not that much you can do about those colonies. You can't fix them other than spotting it early enough on that you can requeen and hope for the best. Um, and that they will be able to bounce back in time for um, winter. So don't be too hard on yourself if it doesn't go well. Uh, really, the best thing you can do when you're first starting out your apiary is to just build up your numbers. Because it's as far as the genetics are concerned, there's good genetics, there's bad genetics, and there's like mediocre, you know. So... You're really not going to find those all stars uh, right away, probably. Um, you're going to have a lot of mediocre hives and you're going to have a lot of lazy bees or not so great um, genetics. And it's just a matter of keeping keeping on and filtering through it all. It's not the fun part of beekeeping, probably. It's probably not what makes made you want to get into beekeeping, but it's really kind of the the main goal of the beekeeper, the main job, is to be more of that overseer of the beehives, not the person that's like doing everything for the bees. Um, so really beekeeping, in my opinion, is it's a lot of genetics and a lot is in the location. And then there's just also a lot of luck um, with how you're going to, what kind of bees you're going to be getting. What do you do with lazy bees? One person asks. Um, it depends on how harsh of a beekeeper you are. Uh, what I personally do with my lazy bees, um, I guess it depends on how lazy they are, but usually I will um, pinch the queen and merge them with another hive. If I have another hive that's also kind of struggling, maybe they were a little slow to requeen or um, something like that. I could merge them with another hive 
Um, I always do first make sure that it's not a problem on my end. I make sure that they are around in an apiary where the other bees are thriving and that they don't have a varroa mite infestation um, and things of that sort. And then usually I will either merge them with another hive or I will just um, let the hive um, die off and pinch the queen and let the hive die off if I think they might have like a um, tracheal mite infestation. Shoot. If you have a feeling that the hive might have a um, a problem that you don't want to spread to another hive, a tracheal mites is a bacteria, I believe, and you just don't want to spread that kind of stuff to another hive. So um, it's kind of a, a matter of what, what you think might be the issue. But I usually don't let lazy bees hang out for too long. <laughs> Um, I'll usually give them until like about a honey harvest, uh, to see how they're doing. I, I don't just like, you know, pinch Queens every, everywhere I go, if a hive's not doing great, but there's only so long I'll, I'll let it hang around before I will do something because that's wasted equipment really that could be going towards something else. Um, uh, and, and usually I, there is a point at which the honey's coming in and I need more boxes and I need to do splits because hives are just overflowing with bees and populations too high and I want to prevent them from swarming. And I look at this one hive that's just doing nothing and how I could be using these boxes to prevent a really strong, heavily populated hive from swarming. And that's when I'm just like, enough is enough. <laughs> Uh, you're getting evicted and these bees are moving in with you. Um, so let me see. Oh, I did want to just mention when you, I, I do have a playlist on this YouTube channel and um, it's about equipment. I have a bunch of videos about equipment you know, just the rundown about the different kinds of boxes and what, what they're all for and um, pieces of equipment that I think are uh, a little confusing for people. So you can check that part out because that's usually the first part about beekeeping is getting the equipment, you know, in this like winter time prep. And then the second part is the buying the bees and being prepared for that kind of stuff. Um I did want to also mention that if you sign up for the newsletter at Beekeeping Made Simple, I do have a discount that comes in your one of your first emails that you get that gives you a, a discount off of the online class I have. Um, oh, and finally, if you are getting your bees and they arrive and it's snowing out or it's raining or the weather is really terrible and you don't think you can install them, I wanted to just uh, really quick talk about that because there's something that happened to me. Actually, my first two years, <laughs> that's what happened. My first year, it got delayed. There was a big storm down south in Georgia where they were picking up the bees. Um, so that wasn't really a problem for us. It was just that the bees were coming like a couple weeks later. Uh, and it's something that ha happens pretty often. So you have to, you know, be prepared that sometimes your bees just are late and it is what it is. You can complain to the apiary if you want, but it's not going to change anything. <laughs> um, I was getting... My first year I started beekeeping with a friend and she, the bees then got pushed back to a later day and it happened to be the day that she was going to be on vacation. So I was just terrified to get these packages of bees and put them in the hive by myself. I actually even, um, it was a top bar hive that we had when we first got started and I had drilled you new know, three quarter inch holes in the hive. I was so scared to put them in. I put wine corks into the entrances and attached um, string to it <laughs> so that after I put the package of bees in the hive, I put the cover on really fast and then ran away and like pulled the cork <laughs> from a distance by um, pulling the string. 
that's not really, really necessary. You'll find that when you empty bees from a package into the hive, they do not fly up at you. They are just so confused and like, you know, disorientated that they just, they don't take it out on you. They communicate. You'll hear the buzzing and they're figuring things out together as a colony. They're not worried about attacking the person that just shook them into a box. Um, so don't be, don't be too nervous about that part. Um, but if the weather is poor, um, the second year we picked them up and it was snowing on the way home. And so if you have a package of bees, that is easier because you can just put it into your garage. If your garage is not like, you know, a part of the house in a way that it's like heated and above like 60 so degrees it's fine it can be in the garage you just want to take a mixed sugar syrup um you know heat up water add some white sugar to it you can add honey be healthy if you have it if you don't it's not a big deal and you just spray the box down um, just so that they have something to eat and they're not starving. You can also shake the can that's in the package. If it feels pretty heavy and you can see that there's liquid dripping out, then you don't have to worry about shaking um, the package. I mean, spraying down the package, then they should have enough food. Um, if you're just buying queens, then you just want to take a little bit of um, water and just put it on the wire part of the cage and keep her in a cool dark space you don't want it to be bright you don't want sunlight to be able to shine on them you don't want it to get warm but you also want to put them in a place where they're not going to be exposed to the elements and have it wind blowing on them and it being freezing cold and then just put them in uh, as soon as you can um, if you have a nuke, on the other hand, it kind of depends on what kind of container they're in. If you can, it would be great if you just brought your deep box plus your lid and your bottom board with you so that you could just put your bees straight in there and bring them home. If that's not possible, you can always just put the nuke next to the beehive. Um, if it's like in some kind of cardboard box like that I gave people that was waxed, you can always just lean a piece of wood like over the over the lid so that it has extra protection from snow and rain. Or you can put it on top of the beehive you're going to be putting it on if you're concerned about the rain or snow, like getting up too high to their entrance. And just putting them in as, as soon as humanly possible. The bees in a nuke box, your main concern is that it's too small of a space for all those bees and they'll take off if um, they're not given enough room. If it's cold enough, they're not going to want to swarm off they're going to be all clustered up but you just don't want to leave them in there long enough that um they'll want to uh swarm um and then of course in there if they're in like this wax box uh then it's not as insulated as a wooden box and so you might want to put something like maybe another beehive box or something on either side of it and a wooden board over top just so that it has protection from wind and the elements until you can move the frames over and installing a nuke is so much easier than a package because you're literally just opening it up picking up each frame and putting it into your beehive you want to put the bees in the center and then you can put your empty frames on the outside this can be done a variety of ways where you put your empty frames um to start i just put all of the frames i recommend putting all of the frames from your nuke all together in the middle and putting empty frames on either side on the edges and then when you open them up in a week or so you can start to take your empty frames and move them into the brood and move your honey frames that they gave you on the outside of the box just to start after after the moving and everything and especially if it's still colder out you know like in the 50s or lower keep all the brood together because you don't want any of that brood dying it and and making it too hard for the bees to keep that brood warm. Once it starts to warm up and it's like 65 plus in the daytime and the bees are acclimated, then you can um, 
start to take the empty frames in that box and and move like one into the the middle of the brood and other frames so that they see that there's uh extra space in the hive and after you install your bees i really just hope you have the time to just sit there afterwards because this is really important this is probably why you got into beekeeping was because you're fascinated by these creatures. So this is a really cool time to see them reorientate themselves. Um, once they're in a new place, you'll see them flying in these like little circles up above the hive and then bigger and bigger circles. And you'll see it throughout the year once you have a lot of new bees um, before they they leave the hive. They'll That's how they orientate themselves and get a feel for the neighborhood um but also when they've been moved they'll do this and depending on when you install the bees they might do it after the installation or maybe the next morning um just go out there and and watch them flying in little circles and getting to know their new neighborhood because it's pretty cute <laughs> for lack of a better word and it's um it's it's important to just stop and make sure that you're appreciating all those little things and not getting too caught up in the technical logistics of it all because when it comes down to it you can buy a nuclear package and it'll probably be fine either way you can buy a marked queen and a unmarked queen it's not going to affect your bees health one way or the other you can buy any of these genetics italian german russian carnelian you still don't know uh, you could still get a great hive, a strong colony, or a really weak hive. Um, all of these things are just kind of uh, options we give ourselves and we give people, but they're not requirements to having a healthy hive or to being a good beekeeper. They're just more options that we have. <laughs> so don't get too overwhelmed by that stuff because that stuff doesn't really matter all that much. Um, so uh, I do have, for people that are in the class, I do have a video of, that shows me installing bees from a package and a nuke for you guys to watch. Um, I'm going to do a, the next video I'm going to do is about why my bees died. Not me, my bees personally, but this is the time of year that people are starting to see that hives did not survive the winter. Um, this is around when the queen should be laying again. Even though it's cold out, she's starting to lay eggs. And if she's not, this might be when you're starting to see that some of your hives didn't survive the winter. So I'm going to go through common reasons why bees do not survive winter time and um, tips on evaluating what, what could have possibly been the cause of um of the colonies collapse. And then I'll um, also talk about uh, caged queens and all that stuff. Um, I really was not a fan of uncaging my queen. And for you guys to get packages that might be the hardest part, it was the hardest part for me was that the queen was in a cage. And my first year, I think when we installed her, we put her in the hive. Um, she was alive. She was in her cage. We had a package in the top of our hive. And um, when I went to go release her, like four days later, she was dead. <laughs> Luckily, the guy I bought her from um, met me that day. It was a Sunday. I just drove over to his place that morning and he gave me another queen which I paid for, but he gave me another queen and we installed her. And, um, a lot of people will tell you at this farm, this is what he told us before you put her in, you take the cork out and the cork that's made out of cork material uh, so that the bees of uh, the queen is in a cage with a candy cork. And once the bees eat through that candy cork, she's released and she is free to be the queen of the kingdom and everything goes, you know, perfectly. Um, and the farm I worked for, they had, you know, a couple thousand hives and that's what they did because they're not going to go and manually release the queen and all of the hives. But um, so it worked fine for them. That's what they did Threw the queen in and closed up the hive. But uh, personally, I think that if you're only going to have a handful of bees or even just like 20, 30 bees, 
you can be a little bit more um I, I, you can be a little bit more thorough in how you do things and you don't have to do things so uh i don't know how to describe it uh so what i recommend is when you get that package of bees or when you buy a queen and she's in a cage you leave all the corks in there and you just put her in and um you want a thumbtack or a stapler so that you can hang her from one of your frames or top bars or whatever you have if your frame is plastic you're going to want uh, tape and you want her in the middle of the brood with the part that's the screen facing out so that the bees can get to her so that she can breathe so that her pheromones are being distributed and then in about four days you will open up the hive pull out the queen cage and see if the bees have accepted her if you're taking a package of bees she should be accepted by now because she's probably been in that package for even longer than um when you installed her since when they made the package um but you can just test it take a blade of grass and you just swipe over the bees and see if they move off the cage you can um lightly blow on the bees uh and see if they move some bees you'll see their proboscis sticking out uh trying to feed her um that's a sign that they have accepted the queen and if you see bees that are just holding on to the cage, if they're buzzing wildly, if you blow on them, they fly off and they immediately come back right back onto the cage. They haven't accepted her and they don't like her. Um, put her back in for another three to four days. If they have accepted her, then you take the end with the cork that doesn't have the sugar candy and you take that cork out and then you hold the cage um i like to hold it sideways so that um like if this is the queen cage and this is the hole for the cork i hold it sideways inside the hive so that she can walk out she walks out pretty fast i mean she's not that stupid she knows that she's being released or you can actually just pull the wire part off the cage in the hive way deep down so that she can step out and then close it up as fast as humanly possible. Um, some people will take a marshmallow, like a little, just like a piece of a marshmallow and put that where the candy, where the cork hole was, just so that she can't immediately fly out. I did have like once or twice, she just flew right out of the hive, <laughs> just flew away. Um, but usually if you just keep it down inside the hive, soon uh, it, it's easy to be, curious and to want to watch her walk out of the hive but just keep it way down inside the hive as far down in the hive as possible if you can have it kind of like leaning on the bottom of a frame so she can walk out onto the frame instead of the bottom board even better and then just close it up um best case scenario you took out an empty frame from the side so that you can just you're not dealing with brood frames. You just put that empty frame right back in at the end of the box and put the lid on as fast as possible. Or just leave that empty frame out of the box and just throw that lid on as fast as possible. Because let's be honest, when you're first getting started, you're slow <laughs> to move things around, to pick up a frame that's covered in bees. So think about this in advance before you do it. Be mentally prepared and know exactly what you have to do so you're not looking at notes and just be ready to once she gets out of the cage um to throw the lid on as fast as possible or you can actually just put the cage on the bottom board before she even gets out and let her get out on her own um i once had bees storm the cage and she never got out and then when i checked in on them like a few days later she was like still in the cage with like a million bees around her um so i let i would watch her walk out but it's really up to you um what you want to do you, you can try it a whole bunch of different ways and just see how things go and if it doesn't go 
Well, then you have another story to tell about one more thing that you did when you were keeping bees that didn't go well. And um, because you'll have a lot of those. The thing is, is that um, it'll be okay if it doesn't go well. If um, she flies up out of the hive, there's a really good chance she's just going to come right back down. Just stand there. Just stand there so the hive looks exactly the way it did when she left. Just stand there uh, for a few minutes and watch and wait uh, and hope that she comes back. Um, if you see her flop on the ground, search the grass. You'll probably find her in the grass and go get her. Um, it's uh, it's um, it's an interesting hobby. <laughs> and you know, there will be a lot of silly things that you'll see and stupid things that you'll do. But um you'll you'll find the way that works the best for you and so if this talk about releasing a queen from a cage is starting to make you nervous get a nuke um and save yourself that stress until next year when you're maybe a little bit more comfortable with these um and you can uh, you know do it a little bit easier so um thanks for watching thanks to everyone who tuned in and i will try to put some of uh my pre-filmed videos up so that i can actually show you things in person with the bees i just can't go out live to the hives because even when i'm in my backyard that's literally just a few feet from this office the quality of the video is really terrible and um, doesn't work so well. So um, uh, have fun beekeeping and post questions and suggestions for other videos if you have them. Have a great evening. Bye.